We need to talk about Jonathan Drouin. He's seemingly been a lightning rod for criticism ever since he joined the Montreal Canadiens via trade. I remember the time on this show when uh, Chris Knuckles Nyland and I had a huge spirited debate over Jonathan Drouin. It's one of the scariest moments of my life. But I'm proud that I defended Jonathan Drouin and his skill on that particular episode. And look how well he's been playing now. He's been putting up points alongside Nick Suzuki and Josh Anderson. Panelists, I leave this to you. What has impressed you the most about Jonathan Drouin so far this season? I think the fact that he's been able to kind of put everything behind him. I think it's been difficult. Uh, He comes here in the trade and then you see Sergeyev doing so well in Tampa Bay and it's constantly being reminded and he's not playing the way that, uh, you know, Habs fans were hoping that he would be. And he could have kind of got to a point where he just kind of gave up and maybe asked for a trade or who knows, but he constantly wanted to improve, put in the extra work. And so far it's been paying off. He's been having good uh, chemistry on his line with Suzuki and Anderson. And uh, I think he's working a little bit harder as well. I think sometimes players, and we've seen this with Drew in the past, and he's with Tampa Bay, can sit sit out and pout and say, until I get my way, I'm going to, you know, uh, do this. But that hasn't been the case. And uh, it's been good. And hopefully he'll be able to keep it up. Yeah. If you look at the winning goal that Josh Anderson scored in the game against the Senators, Jonathan Drew created that. You know, Jeff Petrie made the long stretch pass, sort of dump in, and Drew got in his horse and raced down there, got to the loose puck. Uh, set up the play. People, I think, forget that Drew had a really good start last season, too. He was averaging almost a point a game through 19 games until he had that wrist injury that required surgery. He came back. He didn't get in the, it was horrible after that. I don't think he was 100% healthy. Then he you know, had the ankle injury. Then he was out. But then in the playoffs, he played really well with Nick Suzuki. And they've carried that over into this season. And, and the addition of Josh Anderson is a perfect winger for those two guys, the big power forward with two sort of playmaking uh, guys. You know, Joy spoke this week about how he has to start shooting the puck more. Uh, he realizes that. Uh, he watches a lot of video. Of, he watches a lot of hot games on TV. He watches a lot of video of himself. He realizes he has to shoot the puck more. But he's always a pass-first guy. But, you know, when he first came here, he was the guy. They didn't have many other people. Now he's a guy on this team, right? He's not the guy. They got, you know, you got Josh Anderson. You got Nick Suzuki. Uh, you got the Foley. You got other guys who can create offense. So Jonathan Joy has spit into his role. He's working harder. He's happy with the line mates he has now. Him and Suzuki really have chemistry. And the thing for him is consistency. That's what Claude Julien said. I asked him this week about what he's liked about Joy's uh, game the most, and he said consistency. He's got to continue that. If he stays healthy, I think he can. I think Jonathan Joy is in a, a good situation right now where he's not the guy. Uh, he knows his role. He's playing with good line mates. And I, I think he can keep this up. I think this is the season we see the Jonathan Joy that Mark Bergeron was hoping to see when he made that trade. And I think it's a bonus uh, to be playing with uh, Suzuki and uh, Anderson. I mean, obviously, uh, uh, chemistry is there. And bottom line is, Drew who faced criticism about his work ethic and his liability defensively, you know, today, uh, being a plus six and being a player that you look at uh, yeah, you'd like him to do more offensively on the goal-scoring side, but he is bringing a lot of other things to his game as far as being dependable in the defensive zone. He's working harder. He seems to uh, understand that high-risk plays are no longer part of his uh, resume, and he has to continue on that note. And I think that if he does, he's going to figure out that uh, he's going to have some success and the, the goals will eventually come because – he is a talented kid. He is working. He is getting involved, and he seems to be committed. And uh, I think that his two other line mates are are helping him understand uh, what he needs to do each and every game to allow him to uh, to play well. Yeah, there's times where joint can be a danger on both ends of the ice. And uh, you know, I think the game against Toronto, <laughs> you know, late in the game, he made another one of those dangerous cross ice passes. But it's it's he looks at the game differently. Has that creative vision on the ice. And I'm sure there's times he makes passes like that in his own end and his brain must go, oh, no, why did I do that? But he just he sees the game differently. You know, he learned the game on the outdoor rink uh, in St. Agath and, and the shinny type of hockey. And I think there's times where he, he still has that in him and uh, can make those passes in his own end. But, I mean, the skill he has and the, the, the hands he has and the vision he has, you can't teach that. But, uh, you know, they got to keep working on it to, to limit those mistakes and those sort of dumb passes in his own end and uh, make him less of a threat in the defensive zone and continue to be a threat in the offensive zone. 
Well, that's going to have to come with time. Uh, well, I'll leave it to you guys uh, watching this video here. How well do you think Jonathan Drouin has been playing this season? Uh, be sure to visit HockeyInsideOut.com to check out our full episode and join the discussion in the comments section.